awesome. So you pour yours in? Uh, she's already poured them in. You just pour one in, or one person pours them both in, but then you totally let go. It will drop into this person's hands. So normally it's one or two people. This always has to go in first. That goes first, okay. And then you're looking at about this. It's like seven eighths of a scoop. Huge dent in local hunger. Just in this county, there are 53,000 hungry people. 18,000 are children. We're going to feed 21,000 people today. So before we get the uh, bags on the assembly lines to put food in them and have them weighed and oh, sealed and put in the boxes, off? Yeah, I took my cap off. we need to have stickers put on the bags. So the most important people in the room are right here putting stickers on bags so that the clients who get them know when the meals expire, which is two years from today. And then we send them through the process and they're in boxes and out to the food pantries. Wonderful idea. On this half of the room we're doing beans and rice. This is a seasoning pack. On this half of the room we're doing mac and cheese. This is a cheese, milk, and butter pack. These packs are really 21 vitamins and minerals. Compared to Kraft, this is five times as nutritious, half as expensive to produce. All four of our meals have this nutritional content in them. All of them, you just have to boil water to make them. When the water is boiled out, you pour the pack in, you stir it up, and you eat it. In 10 minutes, you can have a nutritious meal for your family. to have partnered with uh, feedgalveston.org that is sponsored by First Lutheran Church. They have meal packaging um, and they donate those packaged meals to three different nonprofits and we are so thankful to be one of those recipients. So check out their website and see how you can get involved in the next meal packing day. Hi, uh, my name is Ted Hanley and I'm the executive director of the Jesse Tree. Uh, however, I uh, moved to Galveston in 1984 to open our Daily Bread, which is directly across the street from First Lutheran Church, where we happen to be at the moment. And we're here because First Lutheran has undertaken a program to uh, uh, deal with hunger in the community. and. Uh, when the pastor first got here, he shared the concept with me about packaged meals, and they have asked me to, uh, to talk a little bit about hunger in our community. Um, it has been my work since I got here in 1985, and the interesting thing about hunger is it's something we all have in common, globally. Everybody gets hungry every single day. So the truth of the matter, and anybody that knows the Jesse tree knows, our issue is finding the root causes of problems. So if hunger is the problem, what we're really looking for is what is the root cause of it. And that, of course, varies from person to person, varies from place to place. And here in Galveston, I think people who take on hunger as a cause are quite surprised to find out who is hungry in our community. And uh, today, we happen to be delivering food boxes to Holland House, Gulf Breeze, and the Oaks. And that is where some of the very poorest, disabled, and senior members of our community live. And as people drive by those facilities, I, I doubt that many people truly understand how few people are eligible to live there. Uh, it is based on a very, very low income. It is based on medical or disability issues. And so I personally know hundreds of people who would benefit from having an opportunity to live in a facility like that. They're just not eligible. Uh, so hunger really takes you on a journey 
that helps you learn a lot about the community that you live in. Uh, when I first came here, hunger was about feeding the homeless. And what I really learned about feeding the homeless was homelessness is truly a complicated medical problem. It is extremely complicated, involving mental illnesses, uh, involving addictions, involving phobias that people don't even know about. Uh, it is a problem complicated by chronic employment. It is a problem complicated by lower levels of education. So the hunger that is experienced by a homeless person, the actual physical hunger, what I learned, is best addressed by something that has electrolytes or whole milk products because homelessness uh, puts you in such a physical uh, uh, position where you don't get regular nutrition and your body actually craves the electrolytes and the vitamins that help you think. And so what I learned about working with the homeless was a whole milk product, a bottle of Gatorade, or a fresh piece of fruit is truly the kindest and most healing thing that you can feed a homeless person. And I think everybody knows that they wonder if you hand a buck to somebody standing on the corner, are they really going to go buy a banana and a, a bottle of Gatorade? Nah, Gatorade's $2.50 a bottle, uh, but they might buy a beer. And we don't want to feed an addiction. We want to feed a human being. We want to feed the wellness. So hunger takes you on a journey that teaches you a lot about yourself. Uh, about your own prejudices, uh, your own fears. It teaches you a lot about other people. And uh, for instance, the seniors who are receiving the food boxes today, what I have learned there is that right here in our community, we have senior citizens who, although they may be in public housing, they may be receiving some kind of an income, it is so low that they run out of food by the end of the month. And at the end of the month, that food box is a lifeline to just making it to the end of the month. Uh, politics gets involved in hunger. And I hear a lot of criticism about people who use the system and people who get rich on the system. And what I can assure you is I have sat with each of the individuals living in that senior housing and the average number of food stamps that a person living there gets is eight dollars a month. Eight dollars a month. We all go to the grocery store, that doesn't go far. Without that food box, many of the people living in those facilities would have no food in their refrigerator or in their cupboards by the end of the month. There are also other things that hunger can teach us, and that is nutrition. That's what hunger really is craving. It's craving nutrition and that is good, healthy food that is going to build us up, make us well. And once we started the Jesse Tree, we started integrating health care, social services, and ministries, and learning that if you're poor, it is almost impossible to get the health care that you need. It is almost impossible to get the food that you need to pay your bills impossible to get around the community because of transportation issues and all told what that results in is people whose health fails, their finances fail, and they find themselves caught in a trap that is almost impossible to get out of. It takes an entire network of people to help someone rise above poverty, rise above poor health, and unless you truly know how to navigate the system, and if there were not ministries that were willing to fill the gaps that people fall into, most people could not get out of it themselves. So hunger is our friend. We all get hungry every day, and it gets us out into the community so that we learn about ourselves, about other people, and I think right now, for me, one of the sadnesses that I see is the economy of Galveston seems to be booming. 
And yet, who are the hungry in Galveston? They are the people who wait on our tables. They are the people who cut our grass. They are the people that we see doing hard labor, and yet they can't make ends meet. And they're coming for the food. They're coming, especially if they have a health care problem. We uh, have developed a chronic conditions management program where we actually teach people how to manage diabetes, how to manage high blood pressure, how to manage the problems that uh, rob them of good health, prevent them from working. All of those problems are best addressed primarily through good nutrition. And so when we can connect people to good nutrition and then provide the health education that they need to learn how to manage their illness and learn how to manage getting prescriptions, which is another whole issue in itself, we can help people get well and stay well and take care of their families. But it's heartbreaking to see how many people are out there who simply cannot do that on their own, working hard, and in our case, most of the folks coming to the Jesse Tree are coming from two income households that can't make it right here in our community. I always like to call out good examples and a great example of an employer like Mosquito Cafe that really takes good care of their people. Not every restaurant, not every bakery takes care of everybody as well as they do. But they're a great example in our community of people who provide health care coverage. They know their staff. They know when to step in and to get help for their staff great example in our community and who doesn't love Mosquito Cafe. So uh, I was very excited in meeting the new pastor here at First Lutheran. Very excited when he showed me the uh, project that they're working on because this is how people learn about hunger in our community. And these are going to be perfect for somebody who at the end of the month has run out of food stamps, has run out of money, somebody who would otherwise have a bare cupboard will have a meal that they didn't otherwise have. So I am doing what I do because I'm motivated by my faith. I know the people here at First Lutheran are doing what they're doing because they're motivated by their faith. And I have a word of caution. There's a lot of screening going on and eligibility determination. I would hate to ever be in a position of saying no to somebody who's hungry. So I have to choose to work with partners that let me feed the hungry. And don't tell me that one person may be screened eligible and one person may be screened ineligible. And it's something we face every day. So I'm glad to be working with partners that aren't handing out eligibility screening and letting us feed the hungry. Welcome to St. Vincent's House. We are a Jubilee Ministry of the Episcopal Diocese of Texas. A Jubilee Ministry is a ministry designed to care for the poor and the working poor of a particular area. We're a 501c3 and we offer comprehensive uh, social services to the surrounding community of Galveston Island and Galveston County. We offer a food pantry, we have health clinic, uh, medical care, including mental health services. We offer emergency assistance and uh, direct aid for utilities and rents. And we spend us, uh, quite a bit of time helping our homeless um, brothers and sisters, those who are travelers. Uh, we call them travelers who are on the streets without a permanent address. We've been here 60 plus years. St. Vincent's House has served the poor for 60 plus years and our average number of folks who are coming through in about a year, I think we averaged about 31,000 um, folks that we served in various ways, whether it's clinic or food pantry or emergency assistance or uh, we're including case management now as part of our emergency assistance because you know, as a faith-based organization, uh, we're interested in making sure that people recover and reclaim the image of God that's within them. So, um, as most Christians do, we don't spend a lot of time judging whether or not you need to be in the place you're in. We spend time wanting to, uh, with essential services or essential resources to help you uh, get to the next level. And the next level is knowing that you are a beloved of God. 
um, in Jesus Christ and that's who we what we do that's who we are uh, we work with a variety of uh, fellow servants who um, understand that this is a ministry so it's not a job it's an adventure like the Navy and uh, we just we just are grateful that God allows us to serve him uh, Jesus allows us to serve him in his many disguises I know you've heard um, the late mother Teresa used to talk about the many disguises of Jesus in the face of the poor and St. Francis does the same and, and that's how we work um, Jesus says in Matthew, the least you do, what you do for the least of my brothers you do for me. So he identifies with those who are on the margins. And uh, it's really a privilege to be able to identify with Jesus uh, with those on the margins. Um, right now in Galveston uh, County, uh, Galveston Island actually, 18% of our population is living at the poverty level. Now, these are not people who are not working for the most part. These are really people who are working. But when you see their net take home every two weeks of $200 or $300 every two weeks, you wonder how in the world are they surviving. These people are having to work uh, an extra job or extra because they are not earning a living wage. Um, and it's just really important to us that they not be forgotten, uh, that they are, it's known that, um, that we're all in this together. God calls us to be in this together. Uh, this is part of our ministry here at uh, St. Vincent's House, is that we're here with Jesus among the poor. Some of the many uh, programs that we have here at St. Vincent's, we have uh, the Great Closeout, which is a, a monthly event that we have to, to whereas uh, we give our clothes free. And those clothes help some of the people that are looking for jobs but might not be, have anything to wear. And so Daryl is in charge of that and he has done a great job and um, on the third Saturday of every month you can come uh, for free clothes. We also have the food pantry. One of the most misconceptions uh, that I've learned is that you think that everybody that comes to the food pantry is not working or whatever. They are working, some of the families have two jobs, but what happens is that there's not enough money to last to the end of the month. And I feel blessed that we are able to help those in need that might just need some food for uh, another week or two. So St. Vincent is a blessing, not only to those that are not working, but also to those who are working. One of the things about the clothing drive that we have, it's been going on for six years now. St. Thomas Episcopal Church up in uh, League City, they're the one that initiated this here. They come to us and ask if we would like to have a program like this. And for six years, they have been faithful with it. These are just not clothes. These are exceptional clothing. They are clothing that go through that resale shop, almost new shop. And they own hangers, they're pressed, they're clean, they're everything. They're name brand clothing. So many people have come through here and gotten this clothing. One lady that we know of, she said, uh, they asked on her job, how do you be looking so good? Why you be getting your clothing? Where you shop at? She said, but I won't tell them a thing. <laughs> so, you know, St. Vincent is a place where I started almost eight years ago coming to volunteer. And after three days, I didn't want to work here because I was asked to work here. And after three days of seeing what was going on, the people who were coming here so destitute, this was immediately after Hurricane Ike. Then I've been here ever since. I went ahead and came aboard. And there's nothing great if there was any program in America that I would put my money into because I know what St. Vincent does for people in so many ways. This would be one of the programs.
for a year. She had how many children? Four beautiful children. She was, good. She knew I liked the she donuts. Wasn't doing very good. <laughs> that was just Grey Wolf. Wait a minute. Let's push the center okay. That was just only Great Grey Wolf. That's right. With the food truck. And we're going to help everybody. Right. God bless everybody. I like and, uh, but really, the, the, How well it's helping you? Well, the thanks all just goes to the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Because he's the one that's providing all this. He's the one that's making this happen. You know? And uh, I'm really happy this is really happening. Hey. Everybody go yay. Yeah. <laughs> hey. Come here, Ernie. <laughs>